Hello and, <clears throat> hello and welcome to the fourth lecture, Molecular Dynamics Force Fields, Pair Potentials. So uh, we are continuing our discussion, the high level introduction to the molecular dynamics theory to understand what really goes on in a MD simulation. <clears throat> and previously, we have given you a very high level introduction and a very easy explanation of what happens under the hood in molecular dynamics. And we have explained uh, that in a system, uh, whether it uh, contains a protein or a polymer or whatever it is, in order to define its structure and trajectory, you have to actually solve the fundamental F equal to MA equation. And uh, by solving this force equation, you can actually define the system in terms of its potential energy as the force and the potential energy are, are related through the equation that we have shown in the previous lecture. And the energy function that describes the state of the system is called force field, which is uh, very important to define the system, uh, particularly in molecular dynamics. And uh, now we know that this kind of potential energy function, or in other words, interatomic potentials is to be known uh, when you want to define a system or whether uh, you want to run a molecular dynamic simulation. Now we will, uh, if we go into a very detail of a functional form of a system, uh, it will be very difficult to follow. So it's uh, convenient or logical uh, to start with the uh, very simple one, the pair potential. So what is interatomic potentials? We already know that a functional form of the potential energy state of the system, that is an equation with which uh, we're defining how the atoms are interacting with each other in a system. Let's say in a protein, there are so many residues uh, that are interacting with each other. In this structure, there are uh, uh, some atoms and some bonds and some angles and dihedrals and non-bonded interactions, we want to define it by a functional form in terms of potential energy. And that is interatomic potentials. And uh, as a combination, it's called a force field. And uh, uh, if it's a material science perspective, then you can uh, think about a polymer uh, in which the atoms are interacting through bonds and uh, dihedrals and angles and non-modern interactions too. Now, we want to know the interatomic potentials. We want to define the equation in terms of potential energy U. Where do we get this potential uh, functional form? How do we know that our definition is correct? So sometimes it comes from experimental data. Uh, so when it comes from experimental data and based on which uh, uh, we can define our interatomic potential, it's called empirical potentials or empirical force fields. Uh, some popular examples are LJ and Tershoff. Sometimes it comes from some experimental data and some can be uh, exactly calculated. Um, and uh, in this case, it's called semi-empirical, for example, EAM or embedded atom uh, potential. For fully empirical, uh, some examples are LJ and Tershoff or semi-empirical for which some parameters you can calculate from experiments, some, from, uh, some comes from your theoretical calculation. Uh, you can also build a force field. Uh, an example is EAM. And sometimes you calculate exactly from the very electronic configuration perspective. And uh, then it's called an ab initio. That is from the very fundamental level, the, from very electronic configuration level, you are calculating all the parameters in a force field. So how does the potential energy function looks like? It's a functional form, as we have already mentioned. And it really looks like an equation that contains the definition of the uh, positions or bonds, angles, dihedrals, whatever it is needed to define a system fully. So uh, in a very simplistic form, you can think about uh, a potential, interatomic potential or force field functional form looks like something like this, AAX plus BY, some variables and some constants, that's it. Now, 
uh, when it comes to a system, it contains so many interactions, right? And uh, considering those and calculating all the interactions and uh, putting it into a functional form is very uh, difficult to follow. So let's think about uh, the simplest scenario here. Uh, the, in a simplest, uh, from the simplest perspective, what can happen is interaction between an atom with another atom, that is between an atom pair. So when we define a simplistic uh, functional form of uh, potential energy in a system, it's called pair potentials. That is, which considers only two atoms, only interactions between two atoms. For example, let's uh, think about this system where if you talk about this atom and this atom, you are talking about uh, their distance. Let's say this is atom I, this is atom J, and uh, their distance is, uh, let's say, when you count from this, you are talking, uh, you are saying it's R, I, J. So you will consider only interaction between these two atoms, and you think uh, that the all the other interactions are not uh, coming into play. Although it's not true, but it helps us to simplify the functional form. And that's how the pair potential is defined like this, only considering the distance and position between two atoms. So the possibly the most popular pair potential is Leonard Jones potential, which uh, in its functional form looks like this. It's a very popular functional form. And uh, it actually defines the interaction between uh, two atoms, that is, it defines pair potentials in terms of the attraction and in terms of repulsion. So there are only two terms in this uh, uh, functional form. And uh, you can see uh, that when the atoms come toward each other, they start to repel each other. And when it uh, when they go uh, far away from each other, they start to attract each other. That's kind of a very high level, uh, to some extent, some non-technical introduction to Leonard Jones potential definition. And it works well for noble gases, uh, but it doesn't work for all the other uh, polymers or alloys. So it's a very basic uh, kind of pair potential, and you. Uh, get uh, get a feeling how it how it looks like in terms of attraction and repulsion. So in short, a pair potential is defined by interaction with two atoms and it's defined in terms of the attraction and repulsion uh, that is going on between each other. So in the next lecture, um, in this lecture we have actually discussed about uh, uh, an empirical pair potential. In the next lecture, we will look into uh, a hybrid or semi-empirical uh, interactive potential that is EAM. I'll see you there. Thanks.